Good morning, Union Branch. Good morning. Good morning. It is a beautiful day in this neighborhood. So we came to lift up the name of Jesus. For this is the day that the Lord has made, and we shall rejoice in it. David said it like this, I will bless the Lord at all times, and his praises shall continually be upon my lips. But then we're going to go down a little further there. It said, oh, magnify the Lord with me. So I need y'all to magnify the Lord yeah. with us, and we shall rejoice his name together. Well, Lord, oh, Lord, I come. I've come to receive, to receive my blessing, patiently waiting, patiently waiting for the harvest, for the harvest is time. I read that Hebrews, I 11, the one. Hebrews 11 and 1, faith to know, faith to know my blessing is your mine. and it's mine, it's mine, all mine, all mine. All mine. harvest it's time. Harvest time. I'm standing I believe. on your promise. I believe. I'm existing. I believe. In your word. I believe. Everything. I believe. That I speak. I believe. I believe. I believe. To me. I believe. I believe. Pleasure. I believe. That the kingdom. I believe. in line. I believe. And it's mine. It's mine. Oh, mine. It's harvest time. Oh Lord, I come. I've come to receive, to receive my blessing. Patiently waiting, patiently waiting for the harvest. For the harvest is mine. I read that Hebrews I got 11, the and Hebrews 11 and one. The faith to know, the faith to know my blessing will come, and it's mine. It's mine, oh my, oh my, good God, it's harvest time. I believe in him. I believe for great things. I believe he promised me I believe. a long time ago. I believe. I know. I believe. I'm going to get it. I believe. Because the Bible I believe. tells me so. I believe. The I believe. Real pleasure. I believe. That the kingdom I believe. get in line. I believe. Oh, it's mine. It's mine. Oh, mine. Oh, mine. It's harvest time. Well, 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 my blessing. My blessing, my blessing's on the way. Said it, my blessing. My blessing, my blessing's on the way. I've been waiting on my blessing, my blessing's on the way. The Lord say, my blessing, my blessing's on the way. Every day. My blessing, my blessing's on the way. It's on blessing me. My blessing, my blessing's on the way. It's mine. It's mine. Oh my, it is harvest, it's harvest time. time. Well, well, there's a blessing. There's a blessing coming for me. There's a blessing. There's a blessing in store for me. There's a blessing. There's a blessing in store for me. There's a blessing. There's a blessing in store for me. I can wait on it. There's a blessing in store for me. Cause I'm a blessing. There's a blessing in store for me. Say my blessing. My blessing. My blessing. I'm going to say that again. My blessing, my blessing's on the way. 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 And it's mine, it's mine, oh mine, it's harvest time. and my blessing is on the way are you expecting your blessing are you looking for your blessing it's yours all you've got to do is claim it and receive it because it's mine all mine is harvest time praise God amen good morning again to my Union Branch family and to you those in Radio Land, and then uh, we just thank God for another day. Amen. Amen. 
The weather is a little fickle going back and forth, but that's all right. Oh. We're still here. Amen. Amen. I can stand a little cold and then a little hot and then a little cold. My sinuses don't like it, but that's all right. I'm still here. Amen. 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 And I thank God. Amen. Amen. Praise God. You're looking good this morning. Amen. Amen. Praise God. This time, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Most gracious and heavenly Father, we come to you now, God. We're thanking you for all your many blessings, God, that you have showed upon the sons and daughters of men. God, we thank you, God, for our lying down last night and our early rise on this morning. Oh, God, you didn't have to do it, God, but you did, and we say thank you. God, we ask, God, that you will forgive us of all of our sins, oh, God, that we may have committed upon you, God. So, God, we ask for forgiveness right now. Oh, God, we ask that you will create in us a clean heart and renew within us, God, a right spirit, Lord, that spirit that runs after you to do those things that please you, God. In the mighty name of Jesus, God, we ask now, God, that you will send your anointing, God, anoint from the choir stand to the door God oh God let your Shekinah glory fall upon us oh God we need a word from you God in this day and time God we need to hear from you because God without a word from you we won't know what to do so we ask God that you will speak a word through us today God anoint our pastor afresh God as he stands oh God and declare his word oh God your word God, we thank you right now. God, we thank you, and we ask that you will touch, heal, and deliver. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray and we thank you, and we claim it done. In Jesus' name, Jesus amen, name. amen and amen. amen. God has God has smiled on me. He has set me free. God has God has smiled on me, and he's been good. Has he been good to you? I say, has he been good to you? Then you ought to shout amen. Hallelujah. God has been good. 
Amen. Amen. I heard him say that he's better than Campbell's soup. He's mm, good. Amen. Oh, yes, he is. At this time, we will um, have our deacon uh, Loretta Massey come and welcome our first-time attendees, following, followed by our litany uh, by Sister uh, Melanie Jones, and then our offertorial scripture by Minister Solomon Hill, Jr. Good morning, church. Are there um, any first-time attendees? If so, would you raise your hand? Okay. Oh. Okay. Well, welcome to Union Branch Baptist Church, a city of hope. And also, I'm going to add, a city of love. We pray that when you came through the church doors, you felt the love, because this is a loving group of people. I'm here to tell you. Um, we are happy that you decided to worship with us today, um, and please come again. And we hope that you get involved with the fellowship, the music, and whatever God leads you to do, just feel free, because there is also freedom in this church. Amen. I'll be reading litany number 99, Thanksgiving. All praise be to God for the birds of the air, the fruit of the field, and the interstellar space. We praise you for all that is past and trust in you for all that is to come. For our history and our future, we give thanks unto the Lord. Thankfulness should be a constant state of being, but during this season of Thanksgiving, we take special pause to give thanks. All love comes from you, O Lord. Teach us to love for our families and for all who knit us in love. We are grateful. God, our provider, we give thanks for the places we call home, for our nations and motherlands, cities and neighborhoods, places to lay our heads and tables blessed with food, we give you thanks. We are a colorful nation of workers and dreamers, whether we came willingly or in chains. Aid us, Lord, as we continue to challenge this nation to live up to its promises of freedom, opportunity, and equality. Help us as we continue to be the conscious of our land, guardian of civil rights and human dignity. Thank you for jobs and the possibility of jobs. Thank you for well-being and the guardians of our well-being. Thank you for your church and our church family, for our pastor, ministers, and elders. For laughter, joy, and the beauty of the earth, we give thanks. Now unto your son who made one perfect sacrifice for all, we give triumphant thanks. For his shed blood and its redemptive power, we rejoice. We are grateful that from your hand we receive daily sustenance and love that is more than we expect or deserve. All praise be to God for the harvest. We give thanks to him, for God has done great things. For the Lord is good, his steadfast love endures forever his faithfulness to all generations. Amen. Morning. Thank you, God, for allowing us to live to see another day. 
the scripture which come from chapter 3 of Malachi, verses 8 through 10, which says, Will a man rob God? Yeah, you are robbing me. How do we rob you, you ask, by not making payments of the tenth and the contribution? You are suffering under a curse, yet you, the whole nation, are still robbing me. Bring the full tenth into the storehouse so that there may be food in my house. Test me in this way, says the Lord. Test me in this way, says the Lord. See if I would not open the floodgates of heaven and pour out a blessing for you without measure. I tell you one thing I learned about tithe. When I wasn't tithing, a refrigerator break down, my, my wash and dryer break down, my hot water tank mess up. I was going to get worked on my car two to three times out the month. But when I started tithing, yes. come on, come the, on. The, the washing machine wouldn't break down as often. As a matter of fact, the dryer didn't break down. I ain't had no problem with the hot water tank. And God blessed me with a new car. He blessed me with a new washing machine. He blessed me with a new dryer and a hot water tank. And he gave me a little bit of money in my pocket. Thank you. So prove me herewith and see. Won't I open up the windows of heaven and pour you out a blessing that ye shall not have room enough to receive? Praise God. I didn't, my story ain't quite like yours, but it's on the same line. Amen. Praise God. I used to live from paycheck to paycheck, and if the truth be told, a lot of us out here did. Amen? Amen. Praise God. But when I began to give God what belongs to him, hallelujah, he began to multiply better than I could multiply. Amen? Praise God. It's our offering time in the tabernacle. I said it's offering time in the tabernacle. We ought to be glad when they say it's time to come and give God what belongs to him. Amen. For those of you that are in um, uh, Radio Land, um, if you would look on the screen and you will see the many ways that you can uh, give your offering. And for those that are in the building, we still have the old conventional way. You can come up and give your tithes and offerings in the basket in the front. I'm pulling double duty today, but that's all right. Well, I'll go if I have to go by myself. Have to go by myself. Well, said I'll go if I have to go by myself. Have to go by myself. Oh, if my mother don't go, if my father don't go, if my sister don't go, oh, my brother don't go. Said I'll go. If I have to go by myself, to go by I'm gonna say it one more time. Well, said I'll go if I have to go by myself. Have to go by myself. Well, said I'll go if I have to go by myself. Have to go by myself. Yeah. If I have to go 
by myself. Have to go by myself. Well, said I'll pray if I had to pray by myself. Have to pray by myself. Well, said I'll pray if I have to pray by myself. Have to pray by myself. Oh, if my mother won't, won't pray. pray, if my father won't, won't pray. pray, if my sister won't pray. Won't I have to pray by myself. I have to pray by myself. Oh, send me, send me, I'll go. Oh, send me, Lord, send me, I'll go. Please send me, Lord, send me, I'll go. I said, send me, Lord, send me, I'll go. I'll go where you want me to go. Send me, I'll go. If you want me to pray, send me I'll go. I preach if you want me to preach, send me I'll go. Send me I'll go, send me I'll go. Oh, said I'll go if I have to go by myself. Have to go by myself. Oh, said I'll go if I have to go by myself. Have to go by myself. By myself. I have to pray by myself. Oh, said I pray if I have to pray by myself. I have to pray by myself. Oh, if my mother won't pray, if my father won't pray, if my sister won't pray, my brother won't pray. Said I pray if I have to pray by myself. I have to pray by myself. I'll go if I have to go by myself. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. That's why it's important for us to understand that this fellowship that you have with Jesus is an individual thing. Mama, daddy, sister, brother can't get you into heaven. It's only you and God. Your relationship with God. Most gracious and heavenly Father, God, we thank you for those, oh God, that have come in obedience to your word. Oh God, that's bringing up the tithes and the offerings. God, we thank you, God, for how you have, oh God, blessed us, oh God, and given us, oh God, the substances that we have needed, God. As you have promised, God, you continually open up your windows of heaven Oh, God, and give us and make, re uh, make re reservation for everything, oh, God, that we need. God, and you give it to us. So, God, we say thank you. So we ask that you will bless this offering now, God. Let it be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom and the tearing down of the strongholds of Satan. In the mighty name of Jesus, we pray. And all of God's children said amen, amen, amen. amen. and amen.
Thank you, Lord. You've been good. You've been better than good. And we thank you, God. I feel like David most of the time when he says, if I had 10,000 tongues, I'd use every one of them giving God the praise and the glory. Amen. I don't know about you, but sometimes I just get the shouts come down on me. Amen. I holler, thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Do, do, do that happen to any of you? Amen. Praise God. I mean, I can just be just walking along, and then all of a sudden when I think about the goodness of God and all that he's done for me, hallelujah, I have to let my hand go up, Brother John, and say hallelujah, glory. Thank you, God. He's worthy. 24-7. 365. Ha! Ah, there it is. He's worthy all the time. Yes, sir. Amen. Are you ready for a word? I said, are you ready for a word? There's a word in the house because there is a preacher in the house. Amen? And none other than our very own pastor. Amen. Dr. Howard, he's going to come, and he's going to give us the word that God has given to him for us to be able to make it throughout the week after a sermonic selection by the choir. Amen. Sleep. Ah. 
Bless God's name for these voices, uh, for the guys here at Union Branch Baptist Church for reminding us that uh, heaven is looking down on us and heaven also gets involved, amen, uh, with us and sends angels to not only stand alongside of our feet while we are resting at night, tossing and turning as well, but God who also sends angels, and certainly the Holy Spirit, to walk with us throughout even the valleys of life. We bless God's name because God is worthy. Um, God is worthy to be praised, David says, from the rising of the sun to the going down of the same. We just don't bless God's name on Sunday mornings. But every time we look around and every time we consider and take into account how things could have been, or perhaps how they used to be, but how God has at least kept us in the midst of it, and many of us can exclaim how God has seen us through. What a mighty God we serve, and that's why we love the Lord, because he heard our cry, and he inclined his ear unto me. So God bless you all, Union Branch Baptist Church. Good morning. For those of us who are here, those who are attending or sharing with us for the first time, either in person or virtually, um, as uh, Deacon Massey uh, stated, this is a very loving church, a caring church, 
a church that offers and extends unto each and every one of God's children um, the joys and the privileges of fellowship, but also uh, being able uh, to express and worship yourself freely. Amen. Amen. Because no one knows except you and God what God has done for you. Amen, amen, amen. And also what you're still wrestling with, what you're still grappling with, what you're still choosing to trust God at least one more day to reveal or work out toward your favor. So we thank God and we bless God's name for this day. Amen. I, there's a word, but I want to um, readdress or restate or lift up a few other things that were mentioned or brought before you in our virtual announcements or our video announcements that we are having Bible study on Tuesday at 6.30 p.m., 6.30 to about uh, uh, 7.15, 7.40, 7.30, uh, as we are continuing to walk through um, uh, Genesis and also uh, lifting up black history as well as we bring uh, these two realities uh, to our Tuesday night talks or Bible study lesson. And then also on Wednesday, we will not have midday on Wednesday, at, on this Wednesday. We will not have midday Bible study on this Wednesday at 12 noon because we're trusting that uh, for as many of us who can, we will come out on Wednesday night at 7 p.m. We are hosting uh, the pre-Thanksgiving fellowship service. So of the seven churches in this community in Petersburg, we are hosting the pre-Thanksgiving service. Uh, the community choir will sing, and, um, and uh, Reverend Justin House of, of Tabernacle, Chesterfield, Winter Park in particular will be the preacher. So come on out on Wednesday to see your sisters and brothers from other fellowships as well. And then also, um, we are reminding you that come next Sunday, we are celebrating what? Our 133, our 133rd church anniversary. Amen. Amen. Upon this rock, I build my church and the gates of hell shall not prevail against it. So the Lord reminds us uh, that what the Lord establishes is intended to last. Amen until the Lord come to receive us all. So our very own son of this church, the Reverend Marvin Gilliam, Jr., pastor of Mount Carmel Baptist Church in Richmond, uh, who used to be our youth minister, he will be our preacher, and we are bringing back once again, I can't stress it enough, all of the, well, not all, but many of the voices who used to be a part of Access Granted, our youth and young adult choir, they're coming back a little bit older as a reunion choir, to sing on that day. So your last rehearsal union choir is Tuesday at 7 p.m., Tuesday at 7 p.m. So while many of us will be in Bible study, the rest of you all will inspire us in our learning because we're going to hear such songs being echoed throughout the entire 30,000 square foot campus, amen, of, of, of Union Branch. So we look forward uh, to that. And also just a few more things. Listen, thank you all for being faithful uh, with uh, prepping for the gift of presents, our Christmas play. We're going to present it in the form of a dinner in theater on December the 22nd. That's a Friday night around 6.30. The doors will open. Dinner in theater. Thank you all for being faithful because you all meet up every Sunday after service. I don't know if everyone knows that, but they're meeting up on Sunday afternoons right after service to rehearse and prepare for what we believe God will reveal because I remember, y'all, listen, look, the, the fine arts and drama play a major role in transmission, transmitting the message of Christ, all right? Uh, even, yes, the word of God comes across uh, in, uh, to many of us plainly by way of drama. And I say this because I can recall my first experience by way of the drama ministry and the late beloved now resting in that great cloud of witnesses Deacon Eugene Gilliam was leading the um, drama ministry. And, and I don't know, for, you know but if y'all remember this, but my very first official uh, Sunday morning service as pastor here in 2007 was on Easter Sunday. And our sunrise service was the I Find No Fault in Him play. 
for some 70 some persons as a part of that. And I recall and I remember uh, the joy uh, we all experienced when I came down or came up after the production and we opened up the doors of the church following the I Find No Fault in Him Easter play that many other churches used to invite us to come and perform as well. And we need to look at, you know, and we are looking at that. Sister Rashonda shared that, uh, representing that this Easter, right? Um, but, but I remember individuals, without calling all by name, individuals coming forth on that Sunday morning. I said, Lord, it is good for us and certainly good for me to be here. That, that b- before I was to even stand to preach the gospel later on, that, that what, that was a 9 o'clock or maybe it was 10 o'clock, the second service on that Sunday, before I was going to proclaim that he got up early one Sunday morning, the drama ministry had already presented itself in such a manner and a way that individuals yielded to the call and the invitation of receiving Christ. So I say that because you have no idea how one's own son or daughter might respond on that Friday evening by way of God using the drama ministry. All these ministries here work together for the good. Amen. So thank you in advance. And the, the, the angel tree, thank you for being faithful. I was informed that many of you all have been grabbing angels from the tree already, but there are a few more on the tree. You know how we do. God has favored. God has blessed Union Branch down to the, through the years. And we want to make sure that we are still being a blessing unto others as the Lord chooses to entrust unto us resources. Amen. Uh, to serve others and to serve during this present age. So pick up those items. And next Sunday as well, we're going to be asking individuals, uh, at, look, you're faithful in your tithe, you're faithful in your offering, but we're also going to ask for those who are willing, 133 years, to also surrender or render unto the Lord a $133 sacrifice, sacrificial offering uh, because we are, by the grace of God, finding ourselves now on the other side of COVID to some degree, and we're rebounding, but God knows, like so many churches, what little we had saved up, we spent it (laughs) during COVID, amen, when the numbers were down. Let's keep it real, you know, but God has caused us to rebound as we are seeing more involvement, engagement, and, and so forth, and commitment to Christ through the service here at Union Branch. Lastly, and here comes the text after that, we have Deacon Alan Payton in the house this morning. God bless you, Deacon Peyton. Good to see you. Good to see you, my friend. Your daughter, Alicia, as soon as I said it, she stood up smiling and happy. She's up top, skinning and grinning. I see all 75 of your teeth. I know, I know, we know that's your daddy. Amen. The gospel according to Matthew, the ninth chapter, verses 9 through 13. Amen. 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 There's a word here. Amen. As Jesus went on from there, he saw a man named Matthew or Levi sitting at the tax collector's booth. Follow me, he told him, or Jesus commanded of him. And Matthew got up and followed him. While Jesus was having dinner at Matthew's house, many tax collectors and sinners came and ate with him and his disciples. When the Pharisees saw this, they asked his disciples, why does your teacher eat with tax collectors and sinners? On hearing this, Jesus said, it is not the healthy who need a doctor, but the sick. But go and learn what this means. I desire mercy, not sacrifice. For I have not come to call the righteous, but the sinners. Lord, have mercy. Any sinners in the house? If you don't fall within the realm, in the reach of the word of God, who shares with us in Romans, we have all sinned. All. If you're not an all. If you're not an all. Uh, then you are exempt from hearing the rest of this message. The Word of God said we have all sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. But Jesus says, I have come to call, I have not come to call the righteous, but sinners. The grass withers and the flowers fade, but the Word of God shall last forever. 
you may rest yourself as we prepare to hear from the Lord through the scripture and the thought, a new day, a new way. A new day, a new way. God, we are grateful uh, right now for what you have already done and how you've already demonstrated and shown forth and extended your mercy unto us. God, you thank you, God, because when we were far from um, seeking or even desiring to live a righteous life, God, you blessed us and you saved us, you called us, you challenged us, and you reassigned us. God, your word even remind us while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. And I know, God, oftentimes we desire to be uh, made happy, made to feel good. But help us to be made to feel happy and made to feel good by reminding us where God calls us from. Bless now, O oh God, all of us, and bless those Right now, oh God, wrestling us, sitting in the seat of Matthew, who brought in to the distortion and the lie that their lives are not meaningful enough in the sight of even the Messiah to be used. Remind them, oh God, God is no respecter of person. And God calls all. It's just our responsibility to respond in faith. Bless down this preacher. For if you can speak through a burning bush, you can use this earthen vessel. In Jesus' name we say, amen. A new day, a new way. Um, I believe it's a fairly safe assumption uh, to say that within the community of Christ, within the body of Christ, and even beyond, uh, many if not all of us are fairly familiar uh, by definition and experience of what change is and what change is not. Uh, change, conversion, and transformation, uh, Wanda, uh, are words that resonate or ought to resonate within the minds and the spirits of every born-again believer. But also those of us who have yet to connect with Christ, we have been um, uh, engaged in life long enough to know by definition and experience what change or conversion or evolution looks like or means. It's, it's when God and, 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 and God as the first cause and the creator of the cosmos uh, extends God's power in varied ways uh, to bring about a distinct and uh, seemingly unique new uh, disposition uh, in that which at one time carried a different nature. That the change is how and when God is able to transform or even make something that already exists into something different or to something new uh, for the good and the glory of God and even for the well-being and advancement of of the individual, that we are familiar with the words of change, conversion, and transformation. That, and I believe that the scripture helps us to understand that as individuals who are, yes, believers can bear witness to that, this, but also those uh, who come within proximity or dare to uh, be so conscious enough. Sometimes you have to choose. Uh, to be conscious or aware uh, that, that when you experience the Christ, uh, something ought to happen within you. That after encountering Jesus, a change uh, inevitably occurs if, in fact, uh, we, we, we choose to fully surrender to what the Christ is offering us in that moment. That, that as we collide, even sinners, Unto and un, into our Savior, that that something changes. That you ought to never ever remain the same. And I'm not talking about your first encounter, but each and every day or each and every moment, uh, you can acknowledge that you're standing in the presence of the Lord. Every, for that matter, worship experience uh, that is gathered in the name of Christ. Uh, 
you are to leave differently. You, you may have come here dejected or depressed or concerned or envious or jealous of your neighbor. But when you have a Jesus moment and you hear from the Lord through the song, the prayer, the preach word, or the fruit of real fellowship in Christ, every time we gather to worship the Lord, you are to leave convicted or more confident in the Christ. Now, do we have any witnesses here that you came here last Sunday and the Sunday before last perhaps lonely? You came here wounded, wearied, and sad, but you encountered Christ and you left here being made glad. That, that's just the nature of God in, in Christ. Something happens when you have a Christ encounter in a Christ moment. Jesus presents unto us, my beloved, not only a new age, but also along with it, a new opportunity, renewed purpose, discoveries, and new beginnings. Today's scripture is what causes me to make such a claim and assertion and even support my own witness in your witness, Janet, your witness, uh, uh, Bishop, because we know that when you get with God and when you spend time with the Lord, the Lord will do something with you and through you that sometimes you never imagined being done by you and for you. Today's word reveals to us the occasion when Jesus called Levi, Levi whose surname is also Matthew. He calls him into discipleship. He calls him into fellowship. Uh, discipleship is just simply following uh, the Christ. And an invitation has been extended unto Matthew, listen y'all, to drop what he was doing to sacrifice even the successful enterprise uh, that he was established in and to now follow the Lord. Isn't that something about Jesus who even professes and shares with us his own CV or resume when he said birds of the air have nests and for that matter foxes have dens but the son of man has no place to lay his head. But yet this Jesus calls Matthew from his industry of being a fisherman and the safety and security of his own home to follow someone who has no place to lay his head. Sometimes God makes no sense. Sometimes God appears to us to be a contradiction to our own reasoning, knowledge, and understanding. But that's just who God is. God desires for us to trust God and learn of who God is and what God can do by grabbing hold of us and pulling us from out of our comfort zone. And some of us are already wondering, thank you, Holy Ghost, how is it and why is it after I worked so hard for these past 10 or 20 years for this company or this organization and went back to school to earn a second degree or advanced, or advanced degree to be more effective and efficient in the job than now the job has decided to lay me off or let me go. But that's how God moves sometimes. God will call you from your place of sense of security in order to follow him and discover that in him not only do you move, breathe, and have your being, but in him God proves that he will provide your every need because the last time I checked, the earth is still the Lord's and the fullness thereof. Is that not your story, Jessica, that sometimes God will call you out of your comfort zone or your sense of security in order to discover who God is and to also garner out of you greater trust in God, which brings greater glory to God? It's easy praising God when life is easy. It's easy saying you trust God when you have mastered life as you know it. 
this scripture helps us to understand that God calls and extends invitation. An invitation, again, has been extended under Matthew to drop what he was doing and to sacrifice the successful enterprise that he was established in and to follow the Lord. And Matthew uh, is unique in this way. He was among those uh, who were considered least likely to carry out the redemptive work of the Messiah or the kingdom. He was viewed, y'all, as a sinner due to the, his industry and his vocational practices of being a tax collector for an unjust government. And Matthew gets up, the Bible says, and leaves all behind KJ to follow Jesus. And this is what the power of God will do for you. Will it not earn or will not the Lord do that? Uh, it will disrupt and disturb your false sense of comfort again. It will cause uh, you to leave the shores of sin and set sail towards salvation and complete deliverance. I'm talking about complete deliverance when you don't even think about going back complete deliverance you can smell it but yet still not now uh, uh, even made to entertain it complete deliverance you used to drink it and you used to sniff and snort it uh, but you've been so completely delivered you don't have to hide from it but you can even be in the presence of it uh, and it doesn't move you the way it used to move you I'm talking about complete deliverance we're not talking about fickled faith. We're not talking about as we do understand that sometimes it is a process, but some of us know as I heard as recently as yesterday that when God delivers you from the abusive nature, when God delivers you from your promiscuous proclivities, when God delivers you from your addictive behavior, some folk can shout over the fact that he did it totally and completely and it no longer has a hold on you. Uh, he called Matthew uh, and he left it behind. And he will make you, my beloved, I've learned an example of the Lord's election, the Lord's prerogative, and the Lord's transformative power. God will make you an example of how he elects. People select you, but he elects you. Uh, from as the creator of the cosmos and, and, and his prerogative to choose whoever he wants to choose. His transformative power that can turn you around. I say I won't be long today, but somebody needs to hear this because I know you love God. You have a good heart and you're a good person. But sometimes uh, in life you find yourself making judgment over folk that God has called and God has chosen to use uh, based upon what you know about them or what you used to do with them. But here's the mirror that God provides unto us every Sunday morning that says while we are so quick to identify the specks in other folks' eyes, we need to look at the planks within our own. That, And can I say it this way, that if God can choose to save you, come on, Kenny, why can't the Lord choose to use uh, and save somebody else? If God chose to get God's hands dirty and it reach down, way down into the muck and the mire to save us, why can't God do the same? thing to the one that hurt you and wronged you. If God can wipe away your sins, what makes us think that God can't wipe away the bloody hands of somebody else? God can do it, y'all, because it's based upon God's prerogative, God's election, and God's transformative power. It will make you change your commitment and realign your alliances. That's what God's power would do. Matthew goes from sitting and sinning to serving our Savior. So here it is, and I'm just about there to the heart of the message that your consciousness prompts your call to contradict your current condition of existence in order to catapult you into a new reality. I say it again, that your, your consciousness and your awakening, your, your, your alertness, your assessment of who you are, where you are, and what you can become is that which proceeds to call to contradict your current condition of existence in order to catapult you or carry you into an even new and greater and, more be and a better destiny. So I'm just going to talk a few moments about the call and the contradiction and the contribution that Matthew makes because the call is as such that Matthew heard the voice of Christ. He heard the voice of Christ in the midst of the crowd and the commotion. Busy working there as Jesus was transitioning 
through that particular township, but he hears nevertheless his name being called by Christ over the crowd in the commotion. The prevailing culture seemingly benefited Matthew, but unlike some of us who turn a deaf ear to Christ when the going is good, Matthew heard and heeded to the Lord's call, even while he had it going on. You know how it is, my beloved, when we are strapped for cash and can't seem to get ahead and longing for love. We, we pray and we wait in, in faith on a, a word from the Lord. But Matthew, even while at the top of his game, heard the voice of Jesus and decided to commit and follow the Lord. And while you are prospering professionally, guess what? He's still calling you and requiring of you to bless his name. While your marriage is still afloat or in the honeymoon phase, guess what? He's calling you and expecting you to bless his name. So, so every now and again we need to tell ourselves and the culture in the crowd and those who want to suggest unto us that we don't need him because we have already arrived. No, you tell them, uh, baby girl, I might stay in a 4,000 square foot home. I might have two or three cars parked in my driveway. I may make well over six figures uh, and my son and my daughter are doing all right. But hush, hush, because somebody is still calling my name. There, there is still something that the Lord is requiring of me. I, I haven't dotted every I, haven't crossed every T, and the Lord knows that although I'm doing all right, I can be doing a whole lot better. Because if your right is not being done according to what is approved by the righteous one, then it's all for naught. But when you serve the Lord, God will bless you abundantly and exceedingly above all that you could ever ask for. That can someone testify? that you were doing good. You had it going on. You had the one you wanted on your hip or on your arm, but you were still missing something. And when you gave it over to the Lord, that's when you discover like Matthew, what fulfilled life is really what it's about. There's a word here I'm preaching to myself. That, that, that the Lord talks about the call, and when the Lord calls you, something on the inside impels you to move forward. We're not talking about when the preacher opens the doors of the church. The, the, the preacher just being used as an instrument or as a prompt to let you to know, let you to know, respond in light of the fact that you already heard, your, heard the Lord's word. But when, but when the Lord calls you, you something on the inside impels you to move forward, to leave mediocrity and even your so-called pseudo uh, 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 success, to, to let the former things uh, of life pass away, Paul says. You can ask Abraham, you can ask Eli, and ask Isaiah. The call challenges you, the, law, the call convicts you, and the call compels you uh, to make a change in your life. Or to, to be receptive to this cosmic moment to experience a change in your life. That's the thing about the call of God. It is in that moment that if we surrender unto the Christ, that could be your moment to experience a bona fide change in your life. We don't come here to be entertained. We don't come here to check off a block or square on the list of a good God-fearing life. We don't come here to impress mama, dad, or husband, or wife, or the one you're trying to get with. We don't come here again to be entertained. We come here because we desire to hear the Lord call our name. We come here because we need a change to occur in our lives. We come here because because we desire for the Lord to take us higher in him. So there's a call, but there's, there, here's, the, here's the thing. I see you standing wonder. There's a contradiction. We alluded to it last week. We talked about the paradox or that which doesn't make sense. The male calling again on Matthew into the discipleship and the ministry of Jesus Christ contradicted what the world expected of him. It's amazing when you don't have anything, folk don't think much of you. And then by the grace of God, when you get a little something, folk really don't think. 
much of you. Unless you can help them, aid them, or play a part or a role of them getting from you. But the Lord has blessed you with, you know, you know, that, 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 that there's a contradiction because the world didn't expect, again, someone like Matthew to be used. Providing, I mean, proving once again that God moves in mysterious ways. That, that, that God's ways is not our ways. And the mystifying movement of God, I've discovered, keeps believers in suspense because God reserves the right to reveal grace in all forms and through all type of unsuspecting personalities. You see, Matthew was, again, a tax collector. He was an instrument and a beneficiary of the empire in its oppressive policies, but God yet still knew his heart. He could have been a part of the system, but God still knew his heart and his potential. He, he was an extension in many ways of Caesar's ploys to financially oppress God's people, and God's people had a judgment about him, a preconceived notion about who he was and how he was. But Jesus still beckons and summons Matthew to come and follow him. Matthew had been typecast and stereotyped like many, if not all of us, according to what he had been seen doing, but God was apparently more concerned about what God knew of him and what could become of him. See, that's the genius of God, that God not only looks beyond our faults and supplies us with every need, but God sometimes causes your enemy to go crazy and lose his or her mind because uh, no sooner they say ain't no, can anything good come out of Nazareth? No, no sooner they say can anything good come out of you or come out of me, that's when God calls your name. And sometimes they don't have anything obviously to do about us. It's just about God bringing glory to God's own name because uh, God knows that you're a product of the system that you've been benefiting from. Uh, but God also knows that your heart and your interests and your desires. Uh, and that's why God will call you uh, and propel you or catapult you into a new destiny, a new reality so that God can get glory out of it. Uh, in other words, what I'm trying to say uh, that your promotion wasn't necessarily based upon your acumen your brilliance uh, or your pedigree or your resume or uh, how hard you were, to, how early you clocked in, how late you checked out. Uh, but it was because uh, God decided to bring glory to God's name uh, because somebody cursed you. Uh, I'm talking the folk you work with, the folk you live with, uh, who said what in the world are they up to and what they doing and how they're not qualified to do this or do that. But that's when God said, I'm going to promote him. I'm going to promote her so that I can get glory out of the fact that I don't move the way the world moves. I don't judge the way the judge world judges. I use and elevate whoever I desire. That's what God does. So if you don't like what you see, you take it up with God. You know? That's what you ought to tell him. I, 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 I can't even shake off his favor even when I want to. Because every time again I turn around, he keeps on blessing me. And a matter of fact, sometimes, Lord, this popular preaching right here, but sometimes that's why you ought to encourage your haters. Go ahead and talk about you. Because the more you hate on me, the more God elevates me. The, the more you drag my name through the mud, the more the Lord chooses to use me for his glory. That he contradicts culture. He contradicts what others say about you and how you've been typecast or stereotyped. I know we have witnesses in here. I've heard from you. At some point in time, as much as you told me, you need to tell somebody else that you know might be dealing with the same reality or, come or find themselves in a similar context that you found yourself in. When your own mama, your own daddy didn't believe in you, told you to hush up, stop all that foolishness, all that dreaming, but yet God... When every door was shut in your face, 
of progress and imagination. When every rejection you experience, God stepped in and said, I'm going to use you, Matthew. Every time someone chooses to speak ill of you and, and deny your potential in your capacity, God says, I wonderfully and fearfully made them. How dare someone say what God cannot do with somebody when that somebody has not been made by them, but made by God who's able to do all things well. Aren't you glad that God made and God knows what you are able to become and not your able. Think how foolish that is. Think about how small of a mind individuals have that they who did not make you will tell you what you cannot become. You know, those who did not form and shape you in your mother's womb long before the world even knew your name, telling you you are nobody and to give up on your dreams and your aspiration when, when they, they're not the God who formed and shaped you, nor calls and inspires you. Can I talk to somebody? Y'all need to hear this now. Stop allowing folk who don't know you the way God knows you to define you. I don't care how many mistakes you made. I don't care how many failed businesses you have had, how many failed relationships you have had. God calls and God changes, and that change contradicts what others have grown accustomed, listen, of even seeing in you that, that God said, no, I, I can still do uh, what I desire to do. As a matter of fact, God, who is all-knowing and omniscient, uh, and God, according to Calvinistic thought, who preordains my have very well set you up to fail so that he can be glorified in your recovery. Sometimes God will send you through some twists and turns. I'm not looking at failure from a negative connotation. I'm, I'm saying according to how we allow this world to define our, our, our yet to become as failure. God says, no, I use all of that to bring glory to my name. He calls him, and it calls a contradiction, but then God has him to contribute. God as Matthew to make a contribution to the Christ experience. Matthew lends his gifts, the gifts that God had given him, but he lends his gifts, his influences now to the king. Yes, Matthew was a tax collector. collector. He could count. He was good with numbers and uh, perhaps would have been a modern-day CPA, but more importantly, his, this text reveals that he had clout. You know, he had some following. He even had a home that Jesus is later found in. For it is said that many tax collectors followed him to his house where he hosted Jesus. You know, Solomon, listen, the Lord calls Matthew, which is a contradiction to what culture says and what even the community of faith expected or expected of someone to be used by God, right? And, and, and it's a, such a contradiction. He calls him, and then he calls him to signal that he has something within him to contribute to the kingdom building process. And your contribution is not always and necessarily or primarily, for that matter, a tangible gift. Sometimes, as you see it in Matthew's case, it's just his influence, you know. But we, we, we're going to make it plain in a moment. But that he calls him, and immediately he goes to Christ's house. I mean, he goes to his house and invites Christ. After receiving the call, Matthew felt compelled to celebrate and invited Christ in his house where his whole family, the rest of his family, uh, perhaps would abide or abode. But, but the Bible says he followed Christ, and as he followed Christ, whom he invited into his house, 
the rest of the tax collectors and sinners followed him. I'm going to make sure that it's read here. He followed Christ and the rest of the tax collectors, those at that point that Christ hadn't even called yet. All of the rest of the sinners followed him. They followed him as he followed Christ, right? Christ called him. He follows Christ. And then the rest of the tax collectors followed him. I'm going to get there in a minute. Listen, listen. It said the many tax collectors followed him to his house where he hosted Christ. He, he was a man of position and perceived power. Again, he was an influencer. Matthew garnered uh, the attention of both the common folk and uh, his colleagues. He followed the Lord, so they followed him. And when God anoints you, when God calls you, when God sets you apart for a special service, or when God just simply saves you, when the Lord's hand is upon your life and all eyes then are set on you, uh, it then becomes not necessarily the Christ's responsibility to lead others, uh, but those who've been following you all along uh, are to now follow you uh, as you follow Christ. Uh, so therefore, if you were to answer the call and fully follow the Lord, then maybe, just maybe, maybe, just maybe, uh, your sister, your brother will follow you as you follow the Lord. Your best friend or your spouse will follow you as you follow the Lord. Even your arch and nemesis will follow you as you follow the Lord. And I know we have a, an ecclesial responsibility as pastor, preacher, and deacons uh, and evangelists to model the Christ. Uh, but for all of us uh, who've been called and saved and sanctified, God will say, use your influence uh, to have others follow you as you follow me. Uh, because at the end of the day, the Christ doesn't necessarily always go uh, where we have been. Yes, he's omnipresent in all places at all times, uh, but sometimes God says, I don't need to go into the crack house. I don't need to go into sister girl's house. I don't need to go into the liquor house because guess what? I call you from it. So as you leave it as a man or woman of influence, you ought to bring somebody else along with you, uh, that you ought to walk in new dignity uh, and new hope in a manner that folks see in you uh, a change that will trigger or cause them uh, to try the same Christ. And I want to say anybody in here who can attest uh, that if the truth be told, uh, you came unto the Lord uh, not on a Sunday morning by way of the word proclaimed by a preacher, but it was that no good, no count scandal that you used to hang out with uh, that got saved and set free uh, and you said if God can save him uh, if God can use her uh, then surely God can save uh, a wretch like me I'm walking behind him uh, who's following the Lord I'm following her because she decided to give her life uh, to Christ he's just about there here it comes don't ever downplay or underestimate your influence. If God has called you, God knows you have the ability to at least capture the attention and influence one other for the benefit of Christ. That's why the Word of God says we are to train up our children. That's our responsibility, those of us who have chosen Christ, to influence them and have them to follow us as we make our way to Christ. And then they will connect with him uh, for themselves. Proverbs says, as a man thinketh, in his heart so is he. Walter Boogerman, a few years ago, wrote a book, and in one of his assertions, he stated that prophetic imagination in many ways claims that the imagination is uh, the premise or it's, it's the pretext of one's alternative reality. In other words, you, you have to imagine that God can do something differently with you. 
You have to stop allowing the limitations of other folks' imaginations to keep you from becoming all that God can do with you. You know, folk like calling out folks' sinfulness. And they dare, they dare to add such a period or exclamation mark as to suggest that it's absolute. And that's the totality of who they are. But we serve a God who uses commas and semicolons. We, matter of fact, we serve a God who starts new sentences and new paragraphs and new pages, new chapters, new books, new volumes. That we serve a God that will have us to declare, please be patient with me. Because God is not through with me yet. But when God gets through with me, I shall come forth as pure gold that Christ called Matthew. Matthew heard the call of Christ and he surrendered unto him. That's the word of the day, y'all. Again, it requires us surrendering unto the Christ when he calls us. Y'all know how it is sometimes when you don't feel like getting up and moving. Folk will call you and you don't want to pick up the phone. Folk will knock on your door and you don't want to get up and answer the door. But when the Lord calls you, I've learned that it's best to, Tiffany, surrender unto him. You, you have to choose Christ over culture. You have to choose God's will over a quick fix or a quick buck. You have to choose to serve him rather than serving uh, yourself or someone that you know is selfish and narcissistic. God will bless you if you choose him over the crowd commotion and culture that, that Matthew was benefiting from the broken system. But when the Lord called his name. He had not a choice but to heed to the one he heard. And the last time I checked, faith comes by way of hearing uh, and hearing the word of God. And I want you to hear my brother or my sister on this morning, uh, not my tonality or my articulation, uh, but hear the word of God that I'm proclaiming, uh, that the Lord is calling you by your name, uh, calling you from sin to sanctification, uh, calling you from a scornful existence uh, to a saved, blessed, and abundant, and prosperous life. Uh, and if you hear the Lord's voice calling you uh, from being outside of fellowship uh, unto the ark of safety, uh, you ought to do what Matthew did. Uh, you ought to get up without packing your bags. Uh, you ought to get up without turning off the lights of your office. Uh, and leaving and following the Lord while it's day. And you ought to invite them into your home and your heart and have others to see in you what the Lord has done for you and therefore what the Lord can do for them. I don't know about anybody else, but I thank God for his call. And I thank God for how his call is mysterious and it contradicts not only what culture and community Community has to say about you, uh, but it also challenges you and I uh, what we think about ourselves. Uh, you're not just wretched, uh, you're not just a sinner, uh, but you are a child of God, uh, wonderfully and fearfully made by God, uh, and God can use you uh, for God's glory. Uh, so I want to encourage somebody uh, stop holding back uh, and choose to follow Him him. Stop sitting in the seat of the scornful and start following him. Stop choosing to be slothful and selfish, but choose to follow him. Stop judging yourself, but follow the judge and our Savior we call Jesus. And I believe y'all if we follow him and let this world behind us have his own way, then God 
God will do for us. And similar fashion, uh, what God has done for Matthew. Uh, because did I not say, uh, turn to the book uh, of the gospel according to Matthew. Uh, and I believe y'all, if you heed to his call, uh, then you one day can turn to the book uh, of the gospel according to Keith and Paulette. Uh, to call her and Keith and Kenneth. Uh, that you can turn to your own witness uh, and bear witness unto others. Uh, and others will be able to see and exclaim uh, that if he did it for Greg Howard, uh, a bony bachelor boy uh, from the backwoods of Virginia, uh, surely he can do it for me. Uh, I thank God uh, for his calling and his grace. Uh, I thank God for his mercy uh, that still looks beyond uh, every flaw and every fault. Uh, still looks beyond uh, every shortcoming and idiosyncrasy. Uh, still looks beyond uh, your past and your pains. Uh, your trouble in your peril uh, and cause you anyhow. Uh, ain't the Lord good? Uh, then you owe him some praise uh, for what he's already done. Uh, called you from your yesteryear uh, to a new promise in tomorrow. Uh, and is there anybody in here uh, who can shout thank you uh, on the eve of Thanksgiving uh, for what you've already done? Uh, I was sinking uh, deep in sin, uh, far from peace for sure, uh, very deeply stained within, uh, sinking to rise no more. Uh, but the master uh, of the sea, uh, he heard, uh, I said he heard uh, my despairing cry, uh, and up out of the waters, uh, up out of the deep, uh, up out of my sins, uh, he lifted me, uh, now safe, uh, safe am I, uh, give him glory, uh, thank you Lord, uh, for the call, uh, thank you Lord, uh, for the covering, uh, thank you Lord, uh, for the purpose, uh, thank you Lord, uh, for the salvation, uh, ain't he good, uh, ain't he alright, uh, can I say it like I feel it uh, when I think uh, about his goodness uh, and all uh, he's done for me uh, when I think uh, about how uh, he set me free uh, my soul uh, shouts hallelujah thank you Jesus uh, for saving me uh, yes 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 Oh, hallelujah. Oh, bless his name. Bless his name. Give him glory. He didn't have to do it. But you ought to be glad that he called your name. He didn't, he didn't have to do it. But you ought to be glad that he didn't just simply pass by and pass you by. He didn't have to do it, but you ought to be mighty glad that he didn't listen to the crowd. And everything they had to say about you. And what they believed about you. And what could be done by you based upon what you have done to others. This is a new day. And in Christ, an opportunity to embrace a new way of living out your life for the true and full destiny that God has designed for you. That's what Christ is about. It's about every day is a new day. And every day provides unto you an opportunity to embrace a new way. I said this before, you know, I know what works for me. I know who I've tried, and I know who I've heard from, and I know who keeps me. But, I, but, but our Buddhist, Buddhist brothers and sisters believe in samsara and moksha and, in essence, reincarnation. 
He said that you got to die in order to come back better than before. You're in this constant series of reincarnated experiences called Samsara. Your hope is the one day make it to Moksha, their heaven. And that is after perfecting life. But in order to perfect life, you have to die over and over and over again and come back either in a lower state or better state based upon how you live. If you lived a bad life as a human being, you might very well come back as a beast or a burden beast or, or a beast of burden. The hope of being a good mule. And if you're a good mule, you might have an opportunity to come back as a person. And you better be a better person so that you can go on to become a better person. That might work for them. But what I like about Christ is this. You don't have to die. Because on a hill called Calvary, he died for you. And he died for me. So that you through him can have new life right now. Now you have to let your old tendencies, your old flesh die. But you don't have to go in the grave but one time because he already been there for you. And he got up so that you can get up because the word says, if you live in him and you die in him, you also be raised in him. That's what I like about Christ. That's, that's Christianity in a nutshell. So this is a new day and an opportunity for you to embrace a new way or new life as Matthew did that might contradict everything that you have experienced before. What others thought about you and what you think about yourself. That's all right. That's the work of Christ. So I say all of that to say if you have heard the Lord call your name today, whether you're here, downstairs, up top, or you're tuning in, if you've heard the Lord call your name, I am now saying the doors of the church are open so that you can say, here, my Lord. Here, my Lord. I, I hear you calling me. And I got caught up as well. I assumed that I have to be like this one or that one or live this or that type of life before I even come to you. No, he says, come to you just as you are. Come with a true and earnest confession of faith and belief in your heart, and you will be saved. Come on, Matthew, if you're here, why don't you come? Why don't you come? If you have never publicly acknowledged Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, you can come. If you have done so, but you're not a member of a local congregation, the Lord is saying it's time for have a change in your life and in your fellowship practices, perhaps your community of Christ. You're new to the area. You've been here for a while searching for churches. What you see is what you get. I tell folk all the time, we can search and search and search all over. Well, you ain't going to find a perfect people, but you can find those who at least acknowledge that they ain't perfect, but that we follow a perfect God. You cannot forsake the assembly. And I, and I, I really appreciate how serious we are about church fellowship and membership, but all you can do is try it, and if it ain't for you, just go somewhere else. But you need to be somewhere. And attending church is one thing, but making a commitment. Am I talking the truth, Janet? Making a commitment is what the law requires of us. You know? Is there one up top? Is there anyone tuning in? You can respond right now. We'll reach out to you. These deacons are making their way up and down these aisles to meet you where you are. Because from beginning to end, we're walking with you. Why don't you come? It's easy, it's simple. We're not going to put you on the spot. We're not going to ask you to say anything other than just come as a witness and saying, yeah, I'm yielding today. I'm, I'm giving my life to Christ. Oh, I want to join this fellowship. Why don't you come? You, you know, God is blessing us and God is having us to enter this season of revival and God is going to continue to pour many blessings upon this body of Christ. Because we are serious about serving the Lord and 
serving others. Hallelujah. Amen. If you choose to, if you're still wrestling and your mind might not be made up until I say benediction, that it's not too late. Grab hold of me, grab hold of someone, and we will receive you. Amen. Again, can we show some love for our music ministry? And um, the folk up top, the folk on the grounds, our breaking bread lesson this morning. I think it got good to them. They were back there for a while. Very engaging. And we are grateful to have, we're praying for Brother Ernie and, 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 um, and, and, and his absence, but we are grateful unto God for Lamar, who's been apart from us. Our minister of music, as I've shared, and we've been praying for his mother, and we will continue to pray for his mother, but he says that she's making steps toward healing and progress, so... This is our brother, and therefore she is our mother as well. And so we, and uh, I didn't know this, but it's, it explains a lot. Lamar said he's the only child. It explains a lot. No, nah, no, nah, he's a good man, good man, good man, great father and husband. So we are grateful unto God for him. For those of us who are able, we'll stand and encourage you once again to stop by the angel tree. Come on out on Tuesday night and also Wednesday night. But Tuesday night, if you can't make it out for Bible study, you can tune in, of course, virtually. And um, the Christmas play cast will be meeting in the back right after service. And again, the reunion choir will be having their last rehearsal on Tuesday night as well at 7 p.m. Anything else, Reverend Wynn? All right. All right. Okay, I'm just making sure. Oh, yeah. KJ completed another CPU? CPE, I'm sorry. Clinical <coughs> Pastoral Education over at the VA hospital. Completed his second unit. So you need such licensure to practice within the context of a hospital or any healthcare facility um, chaplaincy. So he's making his way through that uh, program. Amen. God, we are grateful and thankful for who you are and all that you have done, for the time that you allowed us to gather and come together as a family of faith. And we pray, O oh God, that we do not rob you of our praise and that we have also truly turn our ears and our hearts and our spirits unto you and what we have received will not just be for this moment but will, will, but will be with us for the rest of the day and for the one who has heard your call oh god as matthew did have us to return with the knowledge and awareness that others might very well be following us as we follow you and also, God, as we enter our own homes, God, we pray that you will tabernacle with us, that you will enter our homes and every space that we occupy, every aspect of our lives. Make it better, God, for your glory. Heal, God, in a manner and a way that only you can heal. Set free and deliver as only you can. Lift, O oh God, every burden, for we declare and decree right now. This is our season, O oh God. To reap, O oh God, the blessings, O oh God, that come forth from sowing service and faith in you. Thank you for all things. Now, God, we ask for traveling grace and mercy. Guide us safely, not only from here, this sanctuary, to our homes or next destination, but even for those of us tuning in, whether we're seated um, in our living rooms or kitchen tables or even resting in our beds. God, we need you to even guide us one step at a time. And we will be oh so careful to give you the glory. Now may the words of my mouth and the meditations of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we say, amen. God bless you and go in peace.